What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over at Coder Beginner Contest 171D, Replacing. So basically you're given a sequence A of N positive integers, A1, A2, up to AN. And then basically what they want to do is you're going to replace every element whose value is BI with CI. And then print out the sums of A after the ith operation. So as we could see here, uh, this problem isn't very difficult when you think about it, but uh, I'll, I'll explain what I mean by it. So let's say we have one, two, three, four. The sum of one plus two plus three plus four is, let's just see, one plus two plus, it's 10, right? So now if you were to replace one, all the occurrences of one with two, you're going to get two plus two plus three plus four. And that is two plus two plus three plus four is 11. So then they print out 11. Now afterwards, we're going to read in 3 and 4. And now we're going to replace all occurrences of 3 with 4. And what does that give you? That gives you 12 after summing it. And then after that, we're going to replace all occurrences of 2 with 4. And what does that give you? That gives you 4, 4, 4, 4. And it's just 16. So um, I'm just going to go over the, the actually the um, the the optimal solution on this problem because uh it's actually not that difficult so here i'm going to show you what the editorials did so here so what you want to do essentially is you want to keep track of the number of occurrences of every single element and you're going to sum up all the numbers first all right so here what i did was i read in uh read an n the number of elements and then i had a the array of numbers I'm reading. I go through n of the number of elements I'm reading. I'm going to read in every single element, and I'm going to keep track of the number of occurrences using a map. So I'm going to map uh, every single number with the number of occurrences by doing occur at whatever uh, number I'm reading, and then plus plus. And then I'm going to keep track a variable of sum that sums up all the numbers. So sum plus equal to a of i. So this is just like the beginning sum. So now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read in the number of test cases because that's what they require us to do. So I do while Q minus minus C and Q, and I'm going to read in B and C and B is the number that you want to replace it with C. So if you do a bunch of, uh, do a bunch of trials, you realize that the sum is actually, you don't, uh, the sum is actually not that there's a pattern you realize. Okay. But you realize that you're actually just increasing the um, the difference between C and B and then multiplying by the number of occurrences of B, right? So like if I'm doing, let's say, go, let's go back to the problem. Whoops, sorry, guys. Let's say I go back to the problem of, of uh, let's go, let's go back to this problem. So let's say I'm replacing all the occurrences of one with two and one, and that's basically just adding the initial sum by two minus one and then multiplying the number of occurrences of one, right? Because the difference of the sum is now changed based on the difference of what your number you're replacing it, subtracting by the initial, the initial value, right? So that's going to be the number that's going to be the increase from the initial sum, right? So then you don't have to recalculate sum over and over again. You just have to calculate the sum of the beginning and then find how much difference it is that it's increasing. So basically all you have to do is just calculate the initial sum, like what I did before, and then you subtract, every time you read in the numbers that you want to replace it with, like the initial number and the number you want to replace it with, you're going to subtract C minus B, right? And that'll give you the, the values that you're going to increase it by, and then you just multiply the number of occurrences of the initial number. So in this case, it would be one, two minus one, which is one, right? And multiply the number of occurrences of one. So if there's only, since there's only one one, it's gonna increase their initial sum, which was 10 by one. So 10 is gonna be plus one, and that'll get you 11. If you look at the second test case, three, four. Um, oh yeah, you also have to update the number of occurrences. So then after that, the number of occurrences of one is gonna drop down to zero, and then the initial number 
one of the number of occurrences of two is going to increase by one right so then now now when you update it you just have uh, you just keep track of that new number of occurrences right because like we're after we've replaced one with two the number of occurrences of one doesn't exist anymore and then two the number of occurrences of two gets increased right so that's that's what we do so I'll go back to the code of what I did before. So my submissions. So in here, basically what I did was after I've cal um, calculated the difference that I'm increasing it by and multiplying by the number of occurrences I'm replacing it by, I just print out my sum and then I add the number of the number of occurrences of the new one plus equal the occurrences of B, right? Because I'm replacing so remember, let's go back to the array case. Since I'm replacing one with two, right? The number of occurrences of two now gets increased by how many ones there are in the array. So that's why I you do this occurrence of C plus equal the occurrence of B. So this would add up the number of times two uh, one showed up so by two, right? So then the number of occurrences of two is now increased by the number of occurrences of one. So that's what it does. And then I set the number of times one goes back to zero, right? So that's what this is, the initial value that goes back to zero. So yeah, that's basically how you do this problem. Um, what I'll explain it again. You want to keep track of the the difference of what's the the times it's increasing it by, right? So so if I'm replacing one with two, I'm gonna see how much my initial sum is gonna increase by, right? And then I'm gonna take that and multiply by how many the number of times one occurred inside the array. So that's what this does. And then I'm going to print out the sum. But while you're doing so, you also have to update the number of times two goes. Right? So because of two occurs one time, you have to increase it. So now the number of times two now gets increased by one. And that's what this does. So yeah, uh, I hope that I hope I explained that correctly. But yeah, that's how you do this problem. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.